Have we, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Never seen you before? No. Probably, like, this is, like, since a few meetups ago, is like the umpteen time I'm saying something. I'll try to keep it short. Um, so, does everybody, like, know about, like, the RFC process that Ember has? Yes. <laughs> I'm not. No? No. Nope. Okay, so Ember has, like, uh, the uh, RFC repo, and what people pretty much dump there is, like, a feature request that they want to see in Ember, and then people can shoot at it. So, for example, uh, there's an RFC to remove a tree line uh, method in Ember, which is Ember K. Uh, and there's like more than three lines of words written on it uh, to remove the tree line method. And there's even more. Um, and there's even more just people commenting on it why it shouldn't or should be removed. So it's pretty much fun all around but yeah if you want to make a change to Ember you have to write one of these and have people discuss it and well it's very tedious but um, so Tom Dale wrote one recently about uh, making all of Ember uh, ES6 modules so right now um, I'll just blow this up for the people in the back uh, you import uh, you import Ember from Ember, and then you use Ember component extend, but that's like, everything is on a global. So what he wants to do, or you can already do this, like import Ember object from Ember object and get from Ember metal get, but that's really confusing because who has ever heard of Ember metal? <laughs> Some people do, <laughs> but it's, it's not really like, something new people will pick up quickly so they uh, Tom Dill really thought about it and, and, and came up with a new system with a add sign before Ember and then categorizing everything in the great in a, in a good way uh, so uh, in the near future you will be doing imports like this uh, and the uh, Let's see if there's a, oh, there's the motivation, I think. So the motivation is reducing load time, because right now you're uh, importing a global, and the global cannot be tree shaken. So if you can import everything, then you can tree shake it. Uh, and the one thing you can tree shake right now is templates, in a way, because uh, they don't import anything, so you can analyze the import, so you have to analyze which components are used, but then there's the component helper, which uh, kills the, the analyzation because, well, the component helper can render anything. So, um, yeah, there's a, a bit of a problem. Oh, by the way, if you want to try the new modules, install this add-on, I've built it, uh, and then you can try it. Is this about the Ember module unification, or...? Uh, no, that's that's another one. Okay, okay, sorry. But this is like the, the ES6 modulification of... So everything is with ification, every RFC, and then yeah. you have a good RFC. So uh, I'm writing a new RFC, and it's like has the nickname Grand Static Component Resolution Unification, because, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, that's a good name. Catchy. So there's so many... Yeah. <laughs> The, the, yeah, the Grand Static is, for, or is from like uh, RWJ Blue or Robert Jackson's uh, Grand uh, Testing Unification. Uh, we can uh, make it a little bit more complex. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the idea is to, to, to be able to tree shake uh, components. Uh, so you tree shake? Yeah, tree shake. Well, okay, so, so there, there's a lot of shit you're shipping with your app right now that's sure. not used. Sure. And tree shaking uh, or removing all of that is called tree shaking. And it, it the, shit you're a not, the shit you're not using. Yeah. Okay. It, it comes from the metaphor of when a tree has its leaves like barely attached. Yeah. The, when you shake it, it falls oh, out. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. So far. Yes. There you go. Exactly. Okay. All right, all right. 
Follow the I'm getting a point. So, uh, some people asked me to uh, just write an RFC, just like for the fun of it. Um, so, uh, I tried to write one and this is like my proposed way to, to get over the problem and, and the new thing here is this bad boy, yeah. <laughs> which is an import statement in your templates, which you're not used to right now, but uh, if my RC lands, you will. <laughs> uh, if you want tree shaking, right? If you want tree shaking, yeah. It's probably an opt-out, opt-in thing. Uh, so, uh, what's this? So, it's a an, an, an handlebars comment with the exclamation mark, so it's backwards compatible, so you can write the tree shaking comments in your add-on or app and it will be backwards compatible to, to uh, handlebars compilers that don't understand it because that's important because well it's Ember and everything needs to be backwards compatible um, and then you <coughs> import the post editor component from the relative past uh, post editor and then you can use post editor uh, in your template and if you just want to call it Tor, then you can do this because uh, it will also have effect in uh, the handlebars around uh, at runtime, so if you do this then it will end, add a hint to your uh, handlebars template, so uh, yeah, it, it will add this to your wire format which Ember now produces, and so if it comes across post edit Tor then it will look at this table and uh, resolve it in that way instead of uh, using the uh, resolving manner it uses now. So why not make it more general and just write JavaScript with, within that exclamation mark so I can write the component in one place? Uh, You're doing that. You're putting the the code and the template together, so why Because not? handlebars is not JSX. That's and we'd like to keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so why do it anyway? Why do it half? Why not do all the JavaScript here? Uh, because then we, we need to adopt something like JSX and then we can just throw out the Glimmer engine and, and start over. So that's... <laughs> yeah, but I don't understand why you should... should this this. Is you can shake it if it's in your code. You can also shake it. Yeah. What, would you write it? There? what would you write in, in comments? No, but you can do the import on your code and then still tree shake if tree shaking is the part you are looking for. Yes, Stefan Penner is like uh, one of the like let's let's get over with it and just import components in your component and then uh, put it on the context of your component and then you can render it that way, but most of them aren't because that's not like the clean way to do it. So basically keeping the template and the component separated would yeah. mean that the template needs to Because be then you're imported. importing everything in your component JS file and then attaching it to your components yeah. and then yeah. in your template you have to yeah. use it. So, so I basically so. guess that the difference is whether you consider the template a really separate thing or like an inexplicable part of a component. So yeah. if you would reuse the same template in different components, you would need to make sure that it has the same context. And when you have it in the template, you're basically better reason included, right? You always are sure that it imports all the components that it needs. Yeah, and so uh, the big thing, uh, I'm just going ahead. Uh, the big thing <laughs> like it's about is, 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 is the, the component helper itself. So right now you, you couldn't use it like this. So you do a concat input and then the type, so you get the good type of input. Um, but like the proposed way to help work with this is like uh, import the, the component helper because helpers also need to be imported. You need to import the hel get helper and the mud helper then. Uh, and this will help you figure out where your helpers in your template uh, come from. So it's not only tree shaking but also a cognitive part. Uh, and well, this this ones are like really easy ones uh, that everybody knows where they come from, but if you have like something that's uh, um, 
yeah, if you have like the uh, uh, your new developer might not know where that comes from, and if you have like the import p or no quotes, sorry, then it immediately knows where t comes from and where to look what t does and this is just simple and, and, and I've seen other things like <coughs> consultant I come into apps from other people and I've seen like a an helper and I couldn't find out where it was and isn't it something like XML namespaces no because normally you have like XML namespace and on top of your uh, your XML file and you import a namespace, for instance, at, hel at ember slash helpers slash mud, and you call it mud. Or in this case, you're you're importing a namespace called locally called T, but it's referencing another uh, another location. Yeah, which you define it from. In my in my opinion, that's just what XML already already invented with namespaces. It's, it, you're, uh, yeah, but this is just in, uh, it's, it's importing not namespaces, one, one but helper. It's very similar. It's yeah. very similar. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> it, it's creating context, but in a different way. Yeah, it's creating context. Yeah, just like imports in normal JavaScript files. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, right. So here you have input components, and that's now a a. Uh, um, uh, just a variable in, and it's passed down and I haven't written that part but I'll just do it right here <laughs> so uh, let's see uh, uh, generic input and then input com, uh, components equals hash and then input text is um, uh, and then input password is something like that. So um, uh, there's you already know the component helper you can use to make uh, closure components, but then this thing is the new thing. So if you're uh, uh, importing uh, one-way input from Ember one-way control slash uh, one-way input, then you can use this one inside uh, parentheses to tell the handlebars that you're meaning to use the component inside the component helper and the component helper will uh, or the handlebars will look up the factory and the component helper can uh, make the, the factory a, uh, a, a, a closure component and then you can use that closure component in your component helper like you normally do and then, uh, well, uh, so instead of using strings, you use the get helper on object with closure components, which is a little bit more involved because, well, this was just a three, three four line thing, and this is like a lot of code, but in the end, you'll ship a lot less code because you're able to tree shake your components. And it's easier to find out where everything comes from. Yeah, I've got a question. Uh, when, you, when you want to write like composable components, like you want to, have a, uh, to write a base drop down, for example, and then you want, want to uh, write a power drop down or power select, for example, yeah, sure. do you need to import uh, the, the, the different um, functions as well uh, in the, in the um, uh, power drop down, for example? Or no, just just, just it's just like a, just a component. If okay, it yields so something, then you don't have to to uh, import what it yields. Okay, so but you were saying like uh, a template writer, uh, maybe he doesn't know where T comes from. Yeah. But then when you're writing in uh, in the power 
drop down, you still don't know where the T comes from because you need to look at the base drop down, right? Or yeah, you've extended it, but yeah. it's still like you don't know where it comes from. It's still like yeah, basically, if you want to use T wherever it it's used. You have to import it. So if yeah. you, but if you pass it down, then you don't have to import. Then only the the thing. You that, just need to look. Uh, right. You don't. You only have to look at that once where it starts to be used. And if you pass it down, then you don't have to import it yeah. the second okay. time. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a bit of the. Uh, 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 well, it's not published yet, so uh, you can't comment on it yet, except for. <laughs> Uh, shouting at me right now. <laughs> um, uh, I had another way of importing in mind, which was like with the add import. Yeah. But uh, people were like, uh, we want to make this backwards compatible because add-ons will use it, and then if they use it, then it will break like older apps. Um, a second thing was an alternative was like, uh, don't do anything with the runtime, so the imports all are only hints for the compiler to, to tree shake. So only if you use a command helper you can import a few things to make sure that the tree shaking algorithm knows what you're doing. But we really liked the cognitive part of it where you import everything you use so you know where it's from and what you're doing. And when you build, it will tell you that you're using something you haven't imported, so you need to know where it's from. Ember yeah. and component makers can change it anymore. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Because if they change, if they want to change it, you have, you, 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 you have to uh, apply that where you get the get. Uh, if it's now in helpers without a S, uh, then you have to uh, for Ember 3.0, you have to sp still use helpers with a S to find the get uh, uh, helper. Yeah, but that's already the case for anything that's not in handlebars. So. Yeah, but it wouldn't. Then you still would not find find your application anymore. Yeah. Or your. Yeah, but uh, that's already a case with with imports in JavaScript files. So. It, yeah, they they're already doing that for. Everything else. But the module maker can now make his decision to change something, and you don't have to change it in your application. But if you do this, you have to your uh, sure yeah. locked in. It, it, it has its like disadvantages, it's, but it has its big advantage that it's like uh, not ambiguous anymore where something comes from. It's it's more explicit, and it also makes it a little bit more breakable if something mm -hmm. outside of your application changes. But I think you actually want to break because then something changes, right? So I think it, it might make add-ons more brittle, but I think it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's very explicit where it came from. I can imagine that uh, if you don't have to import all the components from your whole application anymore for if you're just requesting a page, uh, do you get a lot of speed uh, benefits from, uh, from doing this, like explicitly defining which components you want to use? Um, well, uh, you get speed in that you don't load all your components anymore. Mm -hmm. So, is uh, a big impact or the benchmarks? Oh, the benchmarks. <laughs> there are no benchmarks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. benchmarks. Uh, nothing has been implemented yet, but <laughs> the idea is that that you ship less code uh, at the beginning and and maybe load them later or not load them at all. And this will especially. Uh, benefit you if you have a lot of add-ons that, that, that ship a lot of components that you don't use. Oh. <coughs> Can you help me on the component helper because I'm, I haven't used it anywhere. I, so I, I'm missing some points here. Okay, so the, the, the component helper is, uh, let's go to the, the, the current day. So if you have like something that, that, that's like polymorphic or whatever, uh, so for example, you have like a form and, and, and uh, it can either be like a password field or a text field or whatever. So normally you would wrap around if, else, if, yeah. else, if, else. Yeah, and if you just don't know the type, you can use the type in your component name and then... Ah, okay. Use the okay. So the name of your component is being <laughs> solved with the component helper. Yeah. 
Okay, so like input and then type, it concats it together and then the component helper will get that string and it will just look up the component with that string and render it. Okay, uh, this was really helpful. I was wondering with this import syntax and using like, for example, we, we see helpers three times here and in, in regular JavaScript you can use uh, object decomposing. Is that something you would be considering to use in this syntax as well? Um, because that would make like all this you mean like would read a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Get a mud. Yes. Well, it, it's, it's, it's an option, because but, it, yeah. but the, 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 the rule, well, these are help, helpers, so that's probably, could be a thing, but like, they want to keep it a rule that factories are like a okay. default export and like functions are a uh, named export and well you can debate about helpers being named functions or I, classes, I, so. I, I guess there is there are some nuance there but I can imagine that if this becomes a standard that a lot yeah. of opposing people would basically see themselves having like 10 lines of import statements and then where's my template which might be yeah. three lines and, and, and then there might be some, 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 well, yeah. some pushback. And if you have like a little bit more explicit syntax or like concise syntax in this way, I think that might help with the adoption. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because a lot of the help, or a lot of the imports will probably be helpers. Yeah. Also, when you look at a project like Ember Composable Helpers, if, if we look at our templates, if we, if there's a lot of Ember Composable Helpers in there. If we would have lines for all of them, that might basically like make our import statement half of the time, 40, 50 lines. Yeah, <laughs> that will be bad. So you use all of them in one file, or? Well, not all of them, but like, like <laughs> five from Ember Composable <laughs> Helpers, which would mean five lines. Because then you might need help. I <laughs> <laughs> don't charge. Good point. <laughs> Okay, well, well, that's it, and uh, yeah, think about it, and well, Slack me if you really have like big ideas about this, because well, I would like to know.